Alright, buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, today we got Pastor John Lou Allen. Okay, and I want to share a clip with you. And I just, I want to show you guys how deranged these people are. And there's a lot of them. Where else? But well, we're sitting here reaping the benefits of California. We go to the beach, we go to the mountains, like the, the weather for the most part. I mean, a little hot spell, but no big deal. But we say we don't like it. That's how people treat Jesus. That's how they will in the millennial reign. They'll be sitting here living in the best time on the earth since the Garden of Eden. And they'll be just biding their time because they didn't get saved when they had a chance. And they're basically just putting up with the goodness of God for a thousand years yeah so you understand the scenario that this guy is painting if you will he's claiming that after Jesus comes there will be utopia on the earth with unsaved people All right, that's the that's the picture he's painting, and it's he's deranged. And reaping all the benefits that come with it. I would imagine that Jesus, now this isn't in the Bible, but I mean, we could put two and two together here. What is in the Bible is a massive destruction of the earth that we live in and on. It's natural disasters, it's man-made disasters, it's violence, it's utter chaos. The weather is off, the the stars and the meteor showers and stuff's exploding and tsunamis. We can read about all of that in the Bible. It doesn't take a genius to think that, hey, I think Jesus is going to be kind of putting the earth back together for a thousand years. No, it doesn't take a genius. It takes an absolute moron to believe that. And I just wonder, do these guys even regard the Bible at all? Really? So, in John 14, I think, is pretty clear. Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also so Jesus isn't preparing this world for us he's he's gone and prepare and he's preparing a place for us where he's went it's not here it's in heaven it's in his father's house it is the new Jerusalem the holy city of God which is above and this is consistent all throughout the Bible. The idea that God is going to be destroying this earth and that there's going to be man destroying this earth and that this is Jesus' way of preparing this earth, or, uh, you know, what, what's he say exactly? Well, that in the Bible. It doesn't take a genius to think that, hey, I think Jesus is going to be kind of putting the earth back together for a thousand years. Four thousand years. years, yeah. So, so what, God's destroying this earth, and then man is destroying this earth, and then Jesus is going to put it together piece by piece? I mean, what a, well, Jesus must have lied right here then. 
in my father's house there are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go and prepare a place for you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself it's like uh, you know you want donuts well you can make donuts in your kitchen but what Jesus is saying he's gonna go to the store and get donuts he's not making donuts here he's going somewhere else to get donuts I, I don't know how anybody could seriously not understand John 14 or the entire Bible this this is like a different religion this idea of a thousand years okay so in the thousand years there's gonna be destruction everywhere and Jesus is going to put it back together piece by piece that's not that's not at all consistent with anything in the Bible whatsoever I mean, and this guy is posing as a preacher of God Revelation 20 1 verse 2 and I, I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband the new city of God comes down from God out of heaven I, well, I don't know what this guy's teaching really and it's going to be a pretty sweet place to live but in the middle of that there'll be a generation of people left who rejected Christ somehow lived through the tribulation and didn't get killed by all of the plagues and natural disasters and wars and they're just going to be putting up just abiding abide, their time see this guy he watched a Hollywood movie made by Kirk Cameron that starred Nicolas Cage and he thought that was the Bible that's that's what I think now where else is he getting this idea from he's not getting it from the Bible the Bible says that after the thousand years has ended the devil is let out of his prison and he immediately goes out and deceives the nations and he rallies an army oh 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 rallies an army rallies an army he rallies an army Revelation 20 verse 8 and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea that's not a army that's a huge number of people that's that represents all the unsaved people and that's going to be all the unsaved people on the earth and we're going to be up in the air with the Lord the Bible's very clear about that if you don't know that you don't know squat you got no business with a microphone in your hand to come against Jesus and surround Jerusalem and here we go again right yeah, again here we go again no this is a one-time deal all right verse 9 and they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them <sighs> Galatians 4 verse 26 but Jerusalem which is above is free Jerusalem the holy city they camp they camp they uh, compass the camp of the saints about and the beloved city Jerusalem which is above is free the beloved city and then of course man this stuff is all throughout the Bible all right, when this happens you know when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven at the last trump 
that's the end of the world, then we are changed. We are changed, we are transformed into our glorified bodies. We are lifted up in the air. All right, just like what we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, we are lifted up. Uh, we are gathered together. The angels of God gather together the elect, right? So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, then look up and our redemption draws nigh and the angels are sent to go out and gather together the elect that means that we will be um, changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump and first the dead in Christ shall rise then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord so when this happens we are up in the air right the angels of God gather us together right this is consistent all throughout the Bible it's amazing and it's completely contrary to the Hollywood movie with Nicolas Cage all right, so the harvest is where the wheat is gathered into my barn, the God's barn, and the tares are gathered and put in bundles and burned. All right, and this is consistent with everything that we're reading in the Bible. It's amazing, really. You know, first of all, we go to Genesis 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. This is the Lord speaking to the serpent. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, this is, this is mentioned all throughout the Bible. Let's just keep it simple. Uh, Psalm 110, And the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. We're up in the air. Our enemy is at our feet. Alright, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Man, everything's here. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. We're up in the air. Our enemy is at our feet, right? And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. And I don't know how they missed it, really. They spent too much time watching Hollywood movies. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. This is when we are up in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet. And they compass the camp of the saints about the beloved city, which is above. Right? And so then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all and then when this happens then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory so there is no more unsaved people after this moment when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory this is the end of the world man the harvest is the end of the world just like what we read in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 
It's the end of the world. There is no more death. Revelation 20 makes no mention of a thousand year period after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's plain as day right here. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. That's the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, which happens after the thousand years. Uh, there's, no way, there's no way to get around it. All right, and so real simply, uh, let me just go over this, and then I'll I'll stop the video here. And okay, so real quickly, verse one, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and great chain in his hand. This is another vision that the angel is showing John, and if you would have read the very first chapter. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John to show his servants. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottom was put in a great chain in his hand so this is another vision this is not a continuation of 19 you gotta be a deranged lunatic to believe that this is a continuation of 19 it, it's just it's beyond having a low IQ it's deranged and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years now how is this possible well it's pretty obvious you know really you know there's so much um, confusion out there and so much deception it's, it's sometimes hard to see it but once you see it it's obvious in the Old Testament before baby Jesus was born there was one nation of God outside of that nation of God were the nations deceived by Satan now here comes Jesus and he makes available the kingdom of God to whosoever believes in him and so now Satan is bound alright now when it talks about Satan being loosed or I'm sorry yeah being um, excuse me yes when Satan is being loosed at the end of the thousand years that is when we are gathered up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and then what do we got left on earth all the unsaved so Satan is no longer bound he's he's got total control over the people like he once did before baby Jesus when he controlled the nations that were beyond the nation of God outside of the circle of God right outside of the circle or nation of God alright so we're up in the air our enemy is at our feet right so Satan goes out and he gathers them at our feet compasses the camp of the Saints about which is up in the air and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. all right, and he cast them into the bottomless pit and shut them up and set a seal upon him. They should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be finished. After the, that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. The thrones are those of us that are saved. All right, you think about Revelation chapter 1. It says, And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. We are kings right now. We sit on thrones, on heavenly thrones right now. Right? And we go to... Uh, I have to go to Exodus 19 first. And 
in verse 6 it says you you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation all right these are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel we are a kingdom of priests in first Peter chapter 2 it says we are a royal priesthood and holy nation right which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God so we sit on thrones right now Jesus has made us kings and priests unto God right now uh, you think about think about um, oh, what Jesus says uh, let me find something here what in the world I guess I don't know who's over oh my goodness Oh my goodness, that's terrible. I almost broke the internet with that one. Okay, whosoever liveth whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Think about that. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. When we are born of the Spirit of God, we shall never die. That means the judgment has already been given to us because we will never die. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded and for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. These people are living during the thousand years. And these people are the same people that are, that are living now. All right, to worship the beast is what I consider the default, right? So the beast is the government, and all of the governments of the world are under the be the 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 fourth beast of Daniel which is the Roman Empire, which today is the Roman Catholic Church, as we read in Revelation 17, all the kings of the earth, here, let me go to it. I don't want you to think I'm making this up. It's very simple. And the woman which thou sawest, which represents, um, you know, the, the, uh, the religion, all right, it's called a great whore up here because she is not the bride of Christ, but she pretends to be the bride of Christ, right? The great whore. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, Vatican City, which reigns over the kings of the earth. So you, let's say you're from Spain, they have a king of Spain, right? That poor fellow, he's under the Pope in Rome. You big believer in uh, Osama or uh, Barack Obama? you know or Joe Biden or whatever Donald Trump whoever the king is of the United States uh, they're under the Pope in Rome you've heard the old phrase all roads lead to Rome it's absolutely true alright so don't let this confuse you here I mean, what, uh, so many people are teaching this zombie just like this guy here, this zombie period, unsaved people running around with their heads cut off, and while G <laughs> while Christ is ruling and reigning, and what in the world? You got zombie? What Jesus reigns over the zombies? And I don't know, man. It's just stupid. What these guys teach, it does not square with scripture at all. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. Jesus is the first resurrection. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, for as in Adam all die, so even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. If you know the Bible at all, you should know that Jesus died, defeated death, rose again, and ascended to heaven. He leads the way for us. 
and he has promised, just like what we read in John 14, he has promised to come again for us. All right, so every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, that means he is the first resurrection. All right, just like what we read in John chapter 3, no man has ascended to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Jesus is the only one that has ascended to heaven. He has promised to return for us. And when he returns, he will come in the clouds of heaven, and we will, we will be uh, transformed into our glorified bodies. We will be lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. Our enemy will be gathered at our feet, and and uh, Jesus will stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying death forever. And when this, when this happens, then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. All right. So every man in his own order. Then comes the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. All right, it's clear as day, man, clear as day. All right, so, blood, so Jesus, being the first resurrection, blessed and holy are we that are born of God because we are partakers of his resurrection right now the second death has no power over us whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die the second death has no power over us judgment has already been given to us we are kings and priests unto God right now and they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years right now we reign with Christ right now I don't know how you could claim to be saved and at the same time say oh Jesus doesn't reign in my life let's well, you're not saved then by your own words you're not saved is that where you want to stand is that where you want to be I mean come on man if you're born of God you ought to know it really it's really simple and when the thousand years were expired, Satan is loosed out of his prison, just like I said. We are lifted up in the air to meet the Lord in the air. Our enemies gathered at our feet. This is consistent all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. And Jesus will stomp his foot on the head of the serpent and devour them all. Right? And okay so we got the devil cast into the lake of fire brimstone where the beast and false prophet are we just read about the beast and the false prophet in revelation 19 it's the same place it's the same thing it's the same time you're just getting a different perspective of the very same thing that you just read about and it to me it makes me wonder do people have any attention span at all I mean, can they think for just two seconds? I mean, they can think for one second, but can they think for two seconds that, hey, this is the, describing the same exact thing, and the same exact thing that we read in, Revel in Revelation set in 19 is the same thing we're reading in Revelation 20, and it's the same thing we've been reading about all throughout the Bible. These are not separate, unique events. It's the same doggone thing being repeated a hundred times all throughout the Bible. And people still don't get it. People still don't see it. And I think there's a reason why they don't see it, and that's because they don't have faith. Now, I believe that. They don't have faith in the Bible that they hold in their hands. And it's very plainly uh, told to us in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 15 even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away so you heard me say this before I'll say it again the key to understanding the scripture is faith it's always been about faith the whole thing of salvation is about faith. It's always been about faith. And if you don't believe 
The Bible that you hold in your hands is the perfect, pure word of God from God. Then you don't believe the Bible. And the veil is upon your heart and you won't be able to understand. And doesn't anybody consider the importance of faith? I mean, come on, man. It's incredible how significant faith is. Have you never read this stuff? It's pretty amazing, right? But as we read in, um, oh, is that Romans, um, something or another, 1 Corinthians 2. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Man, you're not going to understand any of this, right? right and I, I just want to show you another one. I'm just going to close it with this. One example of how deranged this lunatic is right here. Senses that kind of like help us understand our world. Storing up wrath is like this. The other day, I caught a rat in the wood pile. And, you know, there's a there's a pretty good pile of wood, and that's just one of them things. If you're going to have a wood pile, you need to catch some rats because it's going to happen. So I put these traps out, and periodically, I get something. And, I mean, it's, it's better than fishing, man, because I never catch anything when I go fishing. Dude, I catch rats all the time, I'm telling you. I don't put them in the freezer, though. But this was a big one, you know, and I... And what I did before thinking, I had this little grabber thing, you know, because I don't want to go grab some rat. I just grabbed my tool. I'm like, snatch, and I just put it in the garbage can. Put it in the closest. Puts it in the garbage can while that thing's alive. And he makes him suffer for three days until he dies. And there's something wrong with people that do that, in my opinion. There's something very wrong when people torture animals. I'm not a fan of rats, but I'm telling you there's something wrong with people that torture animals.